For this next new feature, I honestly don't know who requested this or why um, Pro Tools felt the need to add it, but it's here and whatever. I may or may not ever use this. Hey, man, the world's best doll just keeps getting better. And I'll tell you why. What's up, YouTube family, audio engineers, producers, and artists? I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. This channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the best DAW in the world, the digital audio workstation. The best one, Pro Tools, of course. Now, Pro Tools is the best, the first DAW, but they just keep getting better. And recently, Pro Tools has made some huge additions, some huge improvements to the software. So we're going to check them out. And I'm going to tell y'all the 10 reasons why Pro Tools is the best modern DAW. Let's get into it. Okay, so now let's start off with one of the huge, most recent improvements. And it has to do with Melodyne being built directly into the Pro Tools software. You no longer have to use Melodyne as a standalone or third party app or even a plugin. Check this out. Let's say I got this vocal, right? And I find that there's some type of, um, you know, pitch <laughs> that problem that needs to be solved. One thing that I can easily do is go right over to this little section that used to be only a, a reserved for the Elastic Audio plugins, but now it's also for the Aura plugins like a uh, Melodyne. So if I click here, I can choose to go all the way down and enable Melodyne. Basically what this is going to do is go ahead and scan that audio track, analyze it, and then map everything out right here in the same window that I'm already working in. So now let me just resize this window a little bit. We got my Melodyne window open. You can even see how each note has been found and mapped out within the uh, edit window display on the waveform. I can easily go in here now and let's just uh, zoom in a little bit. I can easily go in. The moon and, darkness. and if I needed to change anything on the arrangement, oh. Maybe I want to make her go higher on that. Cover. Let's see. Let's begin to bloom, but our sun becomes the moon and darkness. <laughs> Let's begin. Let's darkness. Right. All right, so I can go in and easily manipulate using the power of Melodyne right here in my DAW, and I don't have to use any additional processors, any third-party applications, anything. Everything is built right here into Pro Tools. Very, very cool. The next new feature that I want to talk about has a lot to do with my workflow and what I do um, as a YouTuber. Being able to stream sessions directly from Pro Tools through OBS or over Zoom has been really crucial for me. And in the past, I've had to use third-party software to find workarounds, and it's always been a challenge. For example, what I would have to do is set my playback engine, right, to some other playback engine. And if I was using some type of uh, plugins or hardware routing inside of Pro Tools, I lose that uh, capability because I'm changing my playback engine. Now, I can keep my my playback engine set to whatever I want to and use what Pro Tools calls aux IO to be able to route audio signals in and out of Pro Tools very, very easily. Now, simply, let's say I wanted to set this up to do some streaming over Zoom or something, right? Let me close my uh, Melodyne window. Simply just drag it away here. You can do this by just going up to the setup menu, choosing I.O., and then either in your input page or the output page, you'll find this new aux I.O. button here. Once you click this, right, a little dialog box pops up. Aux I.O. allows you to use core audio devices as additional Pro Tools interfaces. This was never the case before. <laughs> it should not be used in place of your main playback engine. Input and output latency may not be consistent and cannot be delay compensated. When possible, use Pro Tools Audio Bridge to avoid audio artifacts over periods of time. Okay, I'm gonna just keep that. But basically here we have it. I have all of these different um, inputs and outputs. So one thing that I would do if I wanted to maybe stream this uh, stereo audio over Zoom or OBS uh, to, to stream to YouTube, one thing I would do is just go ahead and create a Pro Tools audio bridge so let's say i want to go out of pro tools two channels i would create that and hit okay 
Once I do that, you will see that the new audio bridge tab has been created and there are some outputs available. So they've routed everything for me. I hit OK here. And what I ultimately would do if if all of my mix is being routed to my mix bus. So let me just go ahead and do that. I'm a, I might be messing a few things up in this mix, but it's all for the love of y'all. All right. So I'm going to go over to my mix bus. And we're going to go down the track and then go down to that mix bus track. Okay, so simply on my mix bus track here, I'm just gonna go over to Ascend, any Ascend selector, go to Output, and then you see that Pro Tools audio bridge available here. Now what this has allowed me to do is set up the sends and set an independent level so I'm not changing my mix, I'm not changing anything that's happening in my session, but I'm sending my entire mix over to this audio bridge. Inside of Zoom, I would just simply open up Zoom, and then that Zoom Preferences, I would set the microphone as this two-channel Pro Tools audio bridge. That way, anything I play inside of Pro Tools is automatically going to be streamed over zoom now of course there are a few other settings that i probably want to set in zoom but we ain't gonna worry about that right now if you want me to walk through a full tutorial on setting up to use um pro tools aux io with zoom let me know right now we're just doing an overview of these dope new features for this next new feature i honestly don't know who requested this or why um pro tools felt the need to add it but it's here and whatever, I may or may not ever use this. But in the past, we have had um, the ability to make markers and memory locations in our Pro Tools session. Now, before you could only get up to 999 memory locations, but now Pro Tools has increased that amount to 32,000. So you could actually have up to 32 thousand <laughs> new memory locations or markers in your session so um basically a marker is like this location right here for some reason somebody out there said hey pro Tools, that 999 just ain't enough can we get 32,000 markers in a session and yeah they just went and added 32,000 markers so that's a good little feature. I'm glad that that's there for whatever reason. Whoever requested that, yeah, I'm sure y'all out there, let me know in the comments. If you've been a Pro Tools user for a while, then you know that a huge feature and selling point for me of Pro Tools that makes it a very versatile DAW is the amount of shortcuts and the ability to use pretty much a shortcut key for every single thing that you do in Pro Tools. Pro Tools has expanded on that. And not only do you have the factory set shortcuts but you can set user customized shortcut key keyboard shortcuts so whatever keyboard shortcuts that you are used to using you can go in and customize those now for use in pro tools other dogs have had this and basically what i would do in other dogs is go and set their shortcut system to follow what i was used to in pro tools but maybe you're coming from another dog that you've learned their shortcut system you want to use those over in pro tools now you have that ability check this out i'm going to go up to the setup menu and then hit keyboard shortcuts opens up my keyboard shortcut window and now i can literally go in here and change customize add shortcuts for any features that i want to any features that i need to i can even make some of these shortcuts that weren't previously a command keyboard focus shortcut i can make those a keyboard focus shortcut as well keyboard focus shortcuts just allows you to simply use one keyboard one key on the keyboard to actually do a, a command like hitting the letter B to separate a clip all right so that ability to go in here customize set presets for different workflows maybe I have a workflow for uh, shortcuts I want to use when I'm working in Adobe Atmos another set of shortcuts I want to use when I'm working in stereo I can set those as presets I can even import and export these settings to work between different sessions take them with me if I'm working on a different system or anything else so really Really, really cool, man. I love the fact that Pro Tools has added more customization and allowing you to experiment with changing your keyboard shortcuts. Pro Tools has a new feature that I kind of, I'm on the fence about a little bit. Y'all tell me what y'all think. And it's the ability to customize the UI. So with a couple of uh, updates a, a little while ago, we were able to change from the Pro Tools classic uh, gray mode to what they call dark mode. And to do that, you would go to the setup menu, choose preferences, and in the display tab, you could change the UI thing from classic over to dark. Now, 
in the past, when this was first introduced, when you did that, you would need to shut Pro Tools down and reopen it for that change to take effect. Now, as you see, it happens instantaneously, all right? But we can take this even further. I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my window menu and open up the color palette menu. And now, if we hit UI customization, we drop this arrow down, we can really get a lot more uh, features and choices. So right now, I'm in the classic theme because I like that. I, I don't really like the dark mode. I'm gonna just be honest. I, I'm used to looking at things nice and bright. And, and it just, to me, this is the way I'm used to seeing things. But the dope thing is that you can actually change the text colors and stuff. So like, let's say I wanted my text line color to be uh, green, right? So now you see how that has changed. Maybe I want it to be orange. You see how all these, all the text in the session has gone to be orange. You could even do purple, right? You got all of these different choices. <laughs> I'm going to stick with the default because for some reason, just seeing everything in red just it makes me feel like the whole session is going to burn up and, and, and collapse. All right. So we're going to go back to default on that. But you also got other things like text brightness, your text saturation. But this one right here really makes the session ugly. And it's the background color. So once you go to start changing this background color, look at this, man. If this is not the ugliest thing I've ever seen, like why? Why would anybody want to do this? Who is out here rocking like that, man? This is is just straight up hideous man. <laughs> this is terrible pro tools this is absolutely terrible man i don't want to see no 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 go back to the default man but you have all of these different customization options now that we just didn't have before um so if you're really interested in customizing the way that your doll looks pro tools now has all of the features that allows you to do that uh, pretty easily and it's cool that you can customize the way that it looks but for me for the most part I'm going to be sticking with, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be really sticking with um, a, a lot of the default settings because it just, um, it reminds me of some familiarity, man. It keeps me grounded to know that things are the way that I've been using them for so long. With more and more producers and artists using Pro Tools to make beats, and then now we're using it on a laptop on the go, we no longer have to carry around some MIDI controller with us. Pro Tools has finally integrated an on-screen keyboard. Yeah, man. So if you want to make some music, and then, you know, maybe you got an instrument track up or whatever. If I wanted to play something out using my actual QWERTY keyboard, uh, maybe I'm using my laptop or like I'm sitting right here right now, I don't have my MIDI controller connected i can just go right up to the window menu and open up midi keyboard you see that shortcut is shift k and then open up this midi keyboard once i enable my track to be record ready i can start to now use this midi keyboard to play some melodies The on-screen MIDI keyboard is pretty dope. I love that they included this feature. It's gonna be very easy for all of my producers who are on the go to get busy without having to carry a MIDI controller around. One other feature that was introduced with the newer versions of Pro Tools was folder tracks. Pro Tools includes two types of folder tracks, routing folders and basic folders. These folders can help you stay organized in your session, but routing folders have even more flexibility and complexity to them, which allow you to do some stuff basically like you would do with a submaster. Um, routing folders are really dope, actually. So like, let's say I had these uh, few tracks that uh, are part of my course. I can easily select these groups of tracks, right click on one of them, go down to move to, and choose to put them in a new folder. Now, if I just choose a basic folder, a basic folder is just simply gonna fold these together. So let's just call it a uh, chorus. All right, now you see how my basic folder is, which allows me to collapse all of these chorus tracks into one little unit that is still editable. So I can still actually edit the audio clips within them and do other stuff, solo and mute all the members of that folder, even uh, uh, expand that folder to see the members, make certain changes to the individual members and fold them together. Now let's go ahead and delete this uh, folder track right here. We're gonna keep the member tracks. And then let's just say I made a different folder. So I'm gonna select this. And instead of just making a basic folder, what I'm going to do is actually make a routing folder. So I'm gonna move these to a new folder. 
We're going to change this over to a routing folder. And when we do that, we have some new op options available. So we get to choose between the format, whether it's going to be mono, stereo, or multi-channel. Also, I'm going to hit this little button here that says route tracks to the new folder. Basically, what this is going to do, we're going to call this, well, I'm just call this one hook. Basically, what this does is, let's go over to the mix window to see this uh, pretty easy. All right. Here's my Wix window, mix window. Uh, and you can see that this little, that this blue frame around these tracks indicates that they're all a part of this folder. If you look at the outputs of these tracks, they all are going to the hook one bus, which is coming in as the input to this hook track. Now that's just like setting up a sub master, except now I have the ability to collapse all of those tracks into this folder to keep my windows organized and clean without stuff that I don't want to see. I can expand them at any times have individual control over processing each one of these tracks but I also have now control over processing these tracks as a group by putting any inserts or sends directly over the folder itself now we'll cover all of the tracks that are contained within the group pretty dope man so those are the two new folders that I really like I've really been using those to keep my session organized and do some great mixing techniques as well some of the other features that Pro Tools has recently introduced has a lot to do with expanding the capabilities and improving the capabilities of working with Dolby Atmos in Pro Tools. So now Pro Tools Studio and Pro Tools Flex, aka Pro Tools Ultimate, have all of the abilities. So if you, if you are working with a standard Pro Tools system, Pro Tools uh, Studio or Pro Tools Ultimate, you can now work and mix in Dolby Atmos. Thanks to the Dolby Atmos bridge, Pro Tools now makes it pretty easy. I ain't gonna say it's real easy because there's a couple of other things you need to do and you also need to purchase the Adobe Atmos renderer software which they sell separately but you get a discount if you're an annual or a perpetual license holder. You get that discount, but mixing in Adobe Atmos has never been easier in Pro Tools. Have so many built-in features that makes it pretty seamless between working with Adobe Atmos renderer and working in your Pro Tools sessions in a lot of the same ways that you've already been used to. Besides setting up a few settings in your I.O. and routing, Adobe Atmos mixing is very similar to stereo mixing, so a lot of y'all are not going to have trouble with getting started with that. Um, and just in case y'all was wondering, I do have a lot more Adobe Atmos content coming to the channel and no you do not need to go and set up uh you know 12 speakers in your room to enjoy mixing in dolby atmos um most of these features can be done directly in the headphones so all you really need is the software and a little bit of know-how and you can get going with mixing and producing in dolby atmos all right so the next feature that I want to talk about here has to do with Pro Tools Intro. Now, this is a completely free version of Pro Tools. Um, it allows you to create beats, record performances, and have fun making music with the same Grammy winning tools your favorite artists and producers use. Um, it gives you essential audio and MIDI tools that you need, plus 36 effect and instrument plugins to create music of any type all right now basically this is a free obviously a limited version of pro tools but the the reason i wanted to mention this is that a it's going to help a lot of people to get into pro tools without having to come out of pocket and b it's going to be the default version of pro tools for anybody whose license doesn't renew or it expires so let's say you fail to um pay your pro tools bill <laughs> that comes every month well pro tools now is just going to simply switch you over to this pro tools intro license so you'll still be able to do some things in pro tools with limited functionality without just being kicked completely out of the software so i think this is dope that they introduced that and allows the um, easy transition to where hey if your la your license uh laps you will just be able to use the intro version of pro tools pretty easily those are some of the coolest new features in pro tools and i'm super excited about these new additions i'm even more excited about the ability to be able to teach these directly to you via my new pro tools certification courses i'm going to be having pro tools certification courses from beginner all the way up to adobe atmos level available very very soon you can sign up right now by clicking the link down in the description to get started um, or just visit courses.wavywayne.com let me know what other features y'all think are dope in Pro Tools. I'm Wavy Wayne from WavyWayne.com. Be dope.